Well, hi everybody. I hope everyone had a nice Christmas and New Year's. I am about a week late with my update because I ended up with the crappy cold that has gone through floss tube and my whole neighborhood too. So I've been sick and coughing and sneezing and for about a week. I'm really glad I went to Costco and stocked up on Kleenex the week before. But we're feeling better now. This is going to be a short video. I have a bunch of stash, but I'm not going to show it this time because I don't know how long my throat will hold out here. So I've got an FFO. I've got uh, my whips starting uh, in January, for January. And I've also got a surprise find that I uncovered in my closet that I don't even know how long it's been there, but I had to share. So let's do the FFO first. I finished this, I finished the cross stitching like three days before Christmas. And then I was just too lazy to get it actually finished to use Christmas. But I did the Plum Street Samplers 12 Days of Christmas, and I'm very proud with to make that I made my own pillow. And the hand stitching on the bottom does not look terrible. I am really proud of this. So um, I'm, I just did a basic pillow because it's the first one I've ever done. And uh, But next time, I think I'll try putting something around around the edges, some lace or something like that. But I thought this turned out really cool. Um, I love the pattern. It was fun to do, but by about the ninth day, I was ready to move on. Um, but it's still a free pattern. It's still up on their blog. So um, I'd encourage anybody to, to do it if they want something, a Christmassy pillow or wall hanging or anything like that. Or you could even do them individually, which would be cute too. So there you are. That was my one FFO. Um, and I'm very happy with it. I did change a couple of things. I put, um, I did use Gold Krennic for the crowns in each of them and in the five gold, for the five golden rings. And also, what day was it? One day did not have a crown. The eighth day, eight maids milking, there was not a crown on the pattern. So I put a crown on the cow. So there's a little bit of gold in each one of the days, which I thought was kind of cute. So it gave it a little bit of extra bling. So, so for my whips, <coughs> excuse me, um, I've only just got four of them, but I wanted to show them off. My um, New Year's Day start was the um, Santa's Village uh, Sal that uh, I'm doing all on one piece. And so I've worked on this for two weeks. I worked on it the first week of New Year's, and then I just finished working on it for last week. So it'll be put away for um, another three weeks. But this is what I've gotten done so far. It's really fun to do, but I'll tell you, you can't really see it. But there's a lot more white in this baby than it looks like. So any word of, a word of advice for anyone is if you're doing this, do the, don't, don't wait to do the white all at once because it's a pain in the butt. Um, my fabric is not gray. It's actually a real pale blue and I'm doing all of the snowflakes that you can't see at all, actually. There's snowflakes all, all along the top. I'm doing those all in Krennic, so, and uh, I rearranged the houses. And then with Santa and Mrs. Claus, I, moved the tree and her little cookies, uh, cookie tray there so that the two of them could be standing together, which I thought was kind of cute. So 
Um, like I said, I've worked on this for two weeks. It's going pretty well, uh, but I'd really like to get a little bit more of a head start going on it so that I can have it done and finished by Christmas of this year. We'll see how that goes. So that's the first one. The second one that I'll be starting working on today for another week is the um, Celtic Noel, um, which I will hopefully here put in a picture of what it looked like um, before my last week of work, hopefully. And this is what I have gotten done so far. Um, I'm putting in the Krennic, and I haven't done any beads yet, but I'll tell you, I am looking forward to doing those beads. I'm hoping this week to get the rest of her dress done that is down here. There's really not that much left to do. And uh, then I think I will actually break down and do some beading and then when I raise it or move it on the scroll bars I will just I'll use some batting to protect them when I roll it up when I do that the tension isn't as good on it but I'm afraid that if I kept the beading to last I would never get it done so I think I really need for me anyway I need to do it kind of as I go along and I'm really looking forward to seeing the bling so this one, I love working on this and I can really, this is the first of the Celtic ladies that I've done. I can really see myself doing the other four too. So that might be something that I do one a year or something. Um, but I'm also looking at, I've got the other four patterns. I'm also looking at maybe doing a color conversion on one of them, but I haven't gotten very far. I'm just kind of dipping my toes in those waters and we'll see where it takes me. So, and my next one is, whoops, got the pattern on it. Got to get rid of the pattern. Uh, the one that everybody else is doing, I think, and it's the um, Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery adventure I'm really I'm enjoying this but it it doesn't have the appeal that my other whips do so I'm going to give it I did this in one week the first week it came out and I'll be working on this the week after next so I'm gonna give it another week and maybe if I get all caught up that will um, Give me more enthusiasm on it. I have, I did change some of the colors. I changed the wording and this row and the water here um, into to Mo's silks or yeah, they were silks, but I don't, I didn't bring that along with me to say what they were. I will try to remember to do that next time so I can tell you what the conversions were. Uh, I think it'll be really cute, and I'm, I'm really liking doing it on the darker fabric, um, which I believe was also Moe's, yeah. So that one I'm having some fun with. We'll see how that goes. I don't know whether I'll be able to keep up with it or not, but we'll, we'll find out. And then my last one, my last whip I had some trouble with, but we have survived and moved on. And this is Esther's Waves. So what happened with this was I started doing the specialty stitch one. And I started up at the top with the yellow, and I just could not get my head around the placement, because e there's a bead in the middle of each one. I could not, and 
Nicole from Northern Expressions Needlework tried to help me, tried and tried to help me, and told me that it was would be easier if I placed the beads first and then went around and then went back and did the Jessica stitches. So when I tried to do that, I, I don't know whether I was coming down with the cold already or what, but I could not get my head wrapped around the placement of the beads. I'd count and I'd count and it just wasn't happening. And I don't know what was wrong with me, wrong with my head, but I tried, I gr tried gritting and I, it just wasn't happening. So I unpicked the whole thing and I put it in time out for a couple of days. And then I just decided, you know what? If it's gonna be a fight for each row of these, I'm never gonna do it. So I went ahead and I bought the cross stitch only version of Esther's Waves. And I'll tell you, thank you so much, Nicole, for doing the cross stitch versions of these because this is so much more funner than trying to fight with it the every jessica stitch row because there's a whole bunch of them and i i never would have done it so this is much better i am so thankful and if i ever run into any other i mean i've done specialty stitches i've done jessica stitches i know how to do them I just, for some reason, I couldn't wrap my head around this one. So this is my fourth whip and I've actually done some, I can't get it up that close, but I've done the beading on the yellow and the green already. And again, I'm doing, uh, when I move it, I will just put batting through it and protect the beads that way. But it's really, really fun and I think it's going to be gorgeous when it's done so thanks again Nicole and also I'm doing this with the Fiberlicious Silks and I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce her name the lady from Fiberlicious is is it Nguyen anyway I want to thank her too because she tried to help me with the beading and the Jessica stitch issue too and uh, I love I love, love, love your um, fibers. They are beautiful. My husband is not impressed with any of my cross stitch stuff, but boy, when I showed him these, he's like, oh, those are beautiful. And I even had him look through the ones that I bought, and he's the one that picked out the, the colors to use on this. So um, it's gonna be gorgeous when it's done. So thank you very much. Okay, just one more thing and then I'm going to get off of here before I start coughing again. Um, I had, I'm in the process of cleaning out all of my old cross stitch stash. Um, a lot of things that I was never going to do. I've recycled a bunch of them to some places here in town. And I was going through this big box of stuff, a whole bunch of old, old, old things that I haven't looked at since we moved here 10 years ago. And I was, I was sitting on the floor of the closet and I took all this stuff out and I was going through the patterns and I have plastic canvas and I got half done projects and all of this. And what was down at the bottom? bottom of this box. Can anybody guess? Wrong. This is what was down at the bottom of that box. It's dated 2002, I think. Where's my glasses? Sorry, got to put the glasses on. Yep, yeah, 2002 from a needlework store in California that I obviously bought it before we moved, but I never kitted it up. I don't have fabric. I don't have anything. Um, and I just sat there and was like, oh my God, oh my God, when did I do this? I don't even remember. I have no 
remembrance of buying this. So, it's in my stash now. So, I just needed to share that because I was just amazed. Um, I ha it has been open, so obviously I had looked at the pattern, but I haven't done anything with it yet. So, it'll go in my stash of Mirabilia's along with several others. So, I'm sorry I'm a bit late. I've got, uh, like I said, I've got a bunch of stash, but I'm, I'll do that next week or before the 1st of March anyway, and I'll do that as a separate video. I'm not going to apologize for my stash. I'm not going to tell people that I they can wait until the end. I'll wait until the end to do of my video to do my stash. It's my stash. I can show it however I want. And if I want to show my fibers one at a time, I'm going to show them one at a time. Or I'll hold up a big old handful. I won't do that with DMC, but if it's specialty fibers and I want to show them off, I'm going to show them off. So, there you go. I'll probably get my first dislikes here, but that's the way I feel. So, everybody have a good month. I will be back in a week or a week and a half or so with my stash and anything else that has happened since then. And I will talk to you soon. Hope everybody's well and hope everybody's digging out from all the snow and everything. We're here in Arizona. Don't hate me because it's going to be 80 degrees next week. I'm going to go to the pool. So I will talk to everybody soon. Have a good week. Bye.